you very much. Next month will mark five years since the release of a documentary series that sent shockwaves through some of the most powerful and prominent institutions in Baltimore. The Keepers on Netflix detailed horrifying sexual abuse at a now closed Catholic high school, the murder of a nun and a cover up that has lasted for decades. Now, one of the victims featured in The Keepers has written a new book with surprising revelations on what it took for her to survive. She hopes it might help more survivors of child sexual abuse. I have a story I'd like to tell you. In The Keepers, you heard in graphic detail what happened to Jean Hargadon Wainer at Archbishop Keogh High School back in the late 1960s. Sexual abuse by two priests, Neil Magnus and Joseph Maskell, along with other men Father Maskell allowed into his office at the school. I don't know how I made it out of hell, but here I sit. What you have not heard and what has taken Jean decades to resolve is how she managed to survive. Memories of abuse started to surface in the early 1980s, along with guilt and shame. We're talking about young minds. Well, who wouldn't feel like I did it? You know, I made that happen. In 1995, Jean and another former victim both testified in Baltimore City Circuit Court in an attempt to prove the Archdiocese of Baltimore knew about the abuse at Keogh and did nothing to stop it. Instead, a judge ruled the statute of limitations for claims of sexual abuse had expired. The lawsuit was over. When they let Joseph Maskell go, and two major systems, I feel, let him go, what they said to other predators was, as long as you don't get found out, you're good. A loss in court, but life goes on. Jean thought about writing a book, but she had trouble and trauma trying to understand what else kept surfacing with the memories of abuse. She started to sketch what was in her mind and keep journals. Now, after more than another quarter century, her book, Walking with Alethea, is finished. It's a biography at the beginning, but it's a lot of my inner journey throughout it. The inner journey involves accepting the recovery, she says, of multiple aspects of herself that developed while she was being abused all those years ago. We can't handle it, so we fraction off. And the other is, is that we get thrown into another dimension. That's how we that's how we survive it. We, you know, the dissociating, the the severing that I talk about. Almost like you can't handle it. It's so much that you just get thrown into another dimension. Fractions of Jean that she buried deep in her consciousness, but she says eventually the aspects started to come out and communicate with her, including she believes herself as a young child who she refers to as little Jeannie, and then an older version and another 14 year old girl known as Frances who blamed Jean for allowing the abuse to continue, and many others, including eventually Alethea, the Greek goddess of truth and the inspiration for the name of her book. In meditation, she started to refer to them as the girls, along with animals that were their guides. She thought she might be, to use her word, crazy, and that was before trying to let other people know what she was going through. Then we have to also explain how I can say certain things in this that sound so absurd. Well, I decided I've done this for almost 30 years. Maybe I can defend it. Those things do not sound absurd to Ellen Lachter. It's a way of psychologically surviving this horror. She's a clinical psychologist who has reviewed Jean Hargadon Wainer's book. It's not unusual at all, at all to create dissociated identities to hold the memory of such horrible trauma. Lactor has worked for years with people who developed what are more accurately called disassociated self-states. That way the child can uh, wake up the next day in the persona who does not know what has happened and be able to have friends and to go to school and to not lose their mind. But those other personas buried along with the memories of abuse can and do surface with the memories. Because the, the other identity holds the memory, when you connect to that identity, when you kind of meet that personality, you meet also the memories that that 
personality holds. That is what Jean Hargadon Wainer is trying to explain in her book, conversations with those other parts of her consciousness. She hopes walking with Alethea might help more victims and serve as a guide for therapists as well, a roadmap to understand the voices, how she learned to listen to them, and even to gain a measure of peace. Maybe if I can help somebody else, it might be a shortcut. You know, it took me 30 years, but maybe there's something that your therapist can read in here and can feel like, oh, that might be a shortcut. Just knowing that um, the crazy things that you might think nobody will ever understand that this is what makes you tick, maybe they would be understood. Walking with Alethea is available now on Amazon and any place where books are sold. Jean also read it as an audiobook, which is now out on Audible. Now, we mentioned that it's been five years since The Keepers came out. It's also been more than three years since the Maryland Attorney General announced a grand jury investigation into the three Catholic archdioceses in Maryland. Since then, there's been very little information released on what's been going on with that investigation. Jean Hargadon Wainer has some thoughts on that as well. We're going to have that part of the story coming up next week on W. MAR 2 News. I just think it's so brave of her to put that all out there in the books, things she's been struggling with these last 30 years. But like she said, hopefully somebody else who might have a loved one dealing with this will read it and go, oh, this makes sense. Well, I get this. That's the word you use, brave, uh, for her to be able to do this and put that out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's a good book. I read it too. So, I mean, it's, it's available now and it's something that can hopefully help a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah.